We are learning about Daniel's friends. Okay, so Daniel's friends with Daniel when they went into captivity. So these are just pictures that people draw. We don't know what they look like. But people draw some pictures of what they might have looked like. So we have a picture of three boys. What's happening here? They're going into captivity. Do you remember when they went into captivity? Well, Daniel and his friends went into captivity as well with a lot of the young men of Israel. And you know when they went into captivity? They were given different names. So we know Daniel already. Why? Because the book is called Daniel. What were Daniel's three friends? Hananiah, Mishael, Azariah. Maybe you know some people called names like that. You know, we know some people called Azariah. It looks a bit like Michael, doesn't it? Mishael, Hananiah. But when they went into captivity, you know what the Babylonians did to them? They gave them new names. So imagine if you were given a new name. You went to a new country, new culture, and given a different name. What do you think about that, Jerusha? Imagine if you went somewhere else and they gave you a different name, a new name. It's like here. So when they went into Babylon, they called Daniel... How do you pronounce this? Belteshazzar. Belteshazzar. They called Hananiah Shadrach. Mishael, they called him Meshach. And Azariah, they called him Abednego. They're given new names. Different names. So now they were known as this in Babylon, but this was their Hebrew name. Well, one of the stories is these were the boys in captivity and the king would bring them food every day. But chances are this food was, you know, sacrificed to idols because they worshipped a lot of idols. So you know what these boys said? They were given this portion of the meat and the wine from the king and they didn't want to defile themselves with that, that meat and that wine. So they refused it. They said, no. We're not going to eat the portion of food that the king's giving to us. And this was, this is not the king, this was the king's servant that was looking after these boys. And he says to the boys, well, you can't put my life at risk because if I bring you the food and you don't eat it and the king sees you all mm, really skinny, you know, not eating enough food, he said, my life, I'm going to be in trouble. My life's going to be in trouble. And these boys say to them, well, don't give us that, just give us pulse to eat. It's like beans. We're just going to eat plain beans and just see how we go. And then we don't have to defile ourselves with this meat. So he says, all right. He gives them pulse to eat. And then after many days, these three, men, these three boys, hey, they're actually looking better than everybody else, a little bit fatter, a little bit healthier than everybody else, just by eating the pulse and not defiling themselves with the meat that's probably been offered to sacri uh, sacrifice to idols. So then the eunuch says, or the, the servant says, well, we can keep feeding them pulse. Right? So they took a stand, didn't they? That's when they were younger. They said, you know what? king's feeding us this bad meat and wine we're not going to eat it they took something else and you know what they ended up better off than everybody else that's the first story of and this was all four of them daniel uh, was it hananiah mishael and azariah but what were they known as in babylon belteshazzar shadrach meshach and abednego so that was their first test not to eat that food now I'm going to tell you about the second test. This one was even crazier. Maybe you already know this one. So this is them going before the king, right? So the king's seeing, oh, even though they didn't eat the things that I gave them, they just ate pulse, they're looking better than all the other children that defiled themselves with the king's meat. All right, this picture's a little bit hard to see. But when they were a bit older, do you know what happened? King Nebuchadnezzar, so he's a pagan king at the time, he's an unbelieving king, he sets up a golden image. What is that? A big golden statue. And you know what he tells everyone to do? He says, I'm going to play music, cornet, the flute, the trumpet, I'm going to have all this music playing, and when you hear that music, 
I want you to bow down and worship that statue. That was what he put in place. So when they would play the music, everyone in Babylon, look at all of them, they're all bowing down, worshipping this false god, this false idol that Nebuchadnezzar made. But what about Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego? You think they did that? No, they didn't want to defile themselves to the king's meat. You know when that music was playing? You know what they did? They stood nice and tall. They didn't bow down. They didn't, they didn't obey this sinful command to worship an idol. That's them over there. Look at that. Everyone else is down on their knees worshipping a false god. But Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego, they're standing tall. So, you know, some of the Babylonians, they saw this. They didn't like this. So, they, you know what they went and did? They went and dobbed on them. Went and told the king. Said, you know what, king? You set up this, this statue, told everyone to bow down to it. You know, there are these three Jews, and they're not worshipping your gods. So the king's angry because he sets up this image. Somebody's not doing what he says. So he says, is that true? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, you're not worshipping the gods that I set up? He says, I'm going to give you another chance. I'm going to get the music playing. When the music plays, if you bow down and worship the gods, then you're not going to get thrown into the fiery furnace. So they play. <laughs> I think I know, you know the story. So they play the music. Everyone starts getting down, bowing, the, bowing down to the statue. What do you think? Daniel, or what do you think Daniel's three friends did? They stood up. Right? And you know what they said to the king? Because the king was saying, well, you know, if you don't bow down and worship the God, I'm going to throw you into the fiery furnace. And you know what they said to him? You know what? If you throw us into the fiery furnace, God is going to save us from that fiery furnace. But you know what they said? Even if God doesn't, we will never bow to that statue. And this is what they said in Daniel 3.18. So, but if not, saying if God doesn't save us from the fiery furnace, be it known unto thee, O king, that we will not serve thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. Let's read this together. You ready? Daniel chapter 3, verse 18. But if not, be it known unto thee, O king, that we will not serve thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. Right? So that's what they're saying. They're saying, no, we will rather burn in the fiery furnace and worship another god other than the Lord Jesus. Well, they didn't know him by that name back then. They would have known him as Jehovah. So what happened? You can't really see the person here on the photo. So what happened? They got thrown into the fiery furnace. Into the fire they went. But you know what happened? Well, I'll tell you in a moment. You know, they, they made this furnace so hot they put it up seven times hotter than it was normally put in. And you know when they threw them into the fiery furnace, the men that threw them into the fiery furnace were so hot that they died at the entrance of the fiery furnace. But inside the fire, somebody was with them. You can't see it in this picture, but there was a man there. <laughs> somebody was in them. Somebody was in there with them. And you know Nebuchadnezzar, when he saw them in the fire and they weren't dying, you see there, they're praising God. The fire's not touching them, even though they're in there. And you know what Nebuchadnezzar said? I see, didn't we throw three people in there? But then Nebuchadnezzar says, but I see four people in there. And he says, the fourth one, the form of the fourth is like the Son of God. So there was a somebody in there, in the fire with them, protecting them. And you know when they came out of the fire, When they came out of the fire, do you know that their clothes didn't even smell like smoke? So you know, normally, you know when we have a campfire and afterwards you smell your clothes? It smells all like smoke. 
You know what I'm talking about? Well, they were in the fiery furnace and when they came out, the flames didn't touch them. Their clothes didn't even smell like smoke. That's how much God protected them in that fire. And then the king made a decree saying, well, because he was shocked, right? He was surprised that God delivered them from that judgment. And then he tells his whole kingdom, nobody is allowed to speak any word against the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Isn't it an amazing story? They stood up, they didn't eat the king's meat, they didn't bow down, and God delivered them. And that's the example we have today, that if we are asked to do something wrong, we would rather break that law of man than break God's commandments, right? We'd rather obey God rather than men. And it's a picture, because like they were thrown into the fiery furnace and were delivered because they had faith in God, one day there's a fiery furnace for us. What's that? It's hell. But if we believe on Jesus, then we will be delivered from that fiery furnace by putting our faith on Jesus. What do you want to say? I know something? the story. I read it on a book at home. Ah, yes. That's good. All right. So that's the story of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, Daniel's three friends. Hopefully you learned something there. Okay, we've got a craft today to remind us of the fiery furnace. So let's stand up. We're going to go to the back and we'll explain what we're doing today.